Echo Atlantic, the future of Africa is taking shape today in the greatest city of its greatest nation. An ingenious feat of engineering, restoring a shoreline once lost to the sea, developing a new city within a city, vibrant, self-sufficient with reliable infrastructure, a triumph of private enterprise, creating unique opportunities and the potential for near limitless growth. In Echo Atlantic, the future is now. Be a part of it. There's a new woman in town, and she's creating her own world. What dominates her agenda? Knowing what she thinks defines success. Redefining the traditional concept of power, guiding her to wealth. Women on Wealth is her view. Let us wow you. Only on CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Welcome back to Open Exchange. Well, Dread Disease Insurance, an important but often misunderstood uh, financial planning tool. We're joined now by Yanni Fenter, who is Managing Executive at uh, Absa Life, and Paul Rulofsa, a financial planner and consumer advocate at the Financial Planning Institute, uh, joining us. Let's start with you, Yanni. The, uh, the Dreaded Disease Cover, just set the landscape for us. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, Dreaded Disease is, a, is conceptually a very simple product. Um, uh, what, it, uh, what it covers is in the event of certain critical illnesses such as cancer or heart attack or stroke and so forth, you are paid out uh, on, the, on the event of such an event happening. Yeah. Um, I think it's a, it's a product that the need for it is on the increase, um, particularly with people living for longer. Um, it increases the risk then of suffering one of these um, illnesses. Um, but it's a product that's still very much underutilized in South mm. Africa. Let's talk about that underutilization, Paul, because it seems as if there's some degree of confusion whether this is some sort of medical aid or some sort of disability cover. If you could just differentiate it from those two other misunderstood points. Well, let's look at it from a financial planning point of view. Um, a sound financial plan will make provisions for any life-changing event uh, which might affect you financially. And uh, when you come across dreaded diseases, um, obviously, uh, when you contracted a uh, severe illness of that nature, it could lead to a financial loss. So your financial plan needs to have something in place that has that provision to see you through that period of recovery. Now, medical aid does overlap in that sense because there will be a medical expense in most instances when you do contract a, a, a severe illness. Yeah. And on the other side, if it leads to something more severe, it could actually end up being a disablement. So you find that the, the, dis, the d dreaded disease cover or the severe illness cover is actually somewhere in between the, the medical aid provision and the disability provision. Yanni, looking at uh, the catches, there are always catches with these things, and I'm not being horrible about that because these have to be very carefully designed. Yeah. So, for example, you mentioned older people. When you get older, then you're more likely to get to... There comes a point where you're going to get all sorts of things because you're old, so presumably the insurers are not going to cover you after a certain point because, in fact, the actuaries will say, no, no, they're going to get something, so you can't cover them. <laughs> it's true. I mean, one, one needs to understand uh, what is exactly covered, and once you enter into the more detailed definitions of what is covered and so forth, it becomes technical very quickly. So the intention of the product is to cover more severe uh, illnesses as opposed to everything. So if you have a, for example, uh, melanoma on your skin that doesn't really affect your lifestyle, you probably won't have cover. But if you do incur cancer that is life-threatening or that has very large medical expenses attached to it. I just want to come in there. I was phoned and offered, if I ever got cancer, if I took out this policy, then I'd be paid two million rand. Yeah. So if you're diagnosed with cancer, you get two million doesn't matter what effect it has, doesn't matter how big or small. Yes, exactly. And I think that's where the value of advice uh, really comes to the fore in these kinds of products. I think, you know, it's critical for um, a person to get proper financial advice, someone who understands exactly what is being covered. Mm. Often in a phone call, it's to, to, to show you what is the main benefits, but you do need to get into the detail to understand what is being covered. Mm. And it's difficult for a layperson to just understand it because the terminology gets quite heavy because it has to. 
um, and I think an advisor plays an invaluable role in that space. Paul, are there very clear classifications of what exactly constitutes a, a dreaded disease? Can we tick these off and say, this is a dreaded disease and this is... As Yanni put it, um, you must examine your, co your contract very thoroughly because those definitions are quite uh, specific and you must understand what you're actually being covered for. I think I'll just put it out there too that there are actually four main types of disability, sorry, dreaded disease um, incidents that, are, that, uh, that occur. Um, it's a heart attack, a cancer, stroke and the, um, uh, the bypass um, procedures as well. And uh, those actually co constitute about 70% of, of most of the claims. So, so in the context of that, those are the sort of core dreaded diseases that you, you probably will experience. So but is the fact of getting it enough to, to get your payout, or does it have to affect your earning ability? He wants to know if he's getting his two million <laughs> rands or not. Yeah. Well, well that, that's an interesting question, because the old definitions, uh, the, the products have actually you know, gone further than, than you know, from the past. They, they were very staid and they were very sort of structured. Today they're, quite more, they're a lot more flexible and they're a lot more defined. Um, today heart attack will actually be um, assessed on its severity uh -huh. and if you have a, a, a small mild heart attack your payout of the two million could be a lot lower uh -huh. it'll be a percentage of that sum assured but if it's the severity a where you actually have a very severe case of, uh -huh. a, of a severe illness then you'd probably get uh -huh. it's payout. also I think it, it's definitely not linked to your earnings ability it, that that part doesn't come into into these kind of products it is on diagnosis uh -huh. And there are different options available in the marketplace. There are some products that would pay 100% on everything, and there are some that would pay depending on severity. Mm. If it, it's an affordability issue. So again, it depends, issue. doesn't it? Yeah. It's an affordability issue. So if you want full cover on everything, you'll have a more expensive product, but then you'll have a more uh, a full payout on each and every occurrence, as opposed to some other variations, which makes it more affordable. Yana, you've touched on expense. I mean, how when we look at premium comparison as against you know your your medical or your disability cover, is it worth it to get dreaded disease cover compared to and the fact that words, David might not get his two million? Yeah. Is it worth it to get a dread disease <laughs> in a funny way? I think, you know, um, you need to you need to assess uh, what will be the financial impact in in your particular case to make that, that judgment call. In terms of the premium rates, I think the premium rates are similar to life cover. Um, so I think the incidence is 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 is, is in a in a similar space to to to, uh, to mortality, um, but the the impact of a of a dreaded disease product um, goes beyond the actual medical cost. In some of the uh, cases, it may warrant a change in lifestyle. So you may need to make changes to your house or changes to your motor vehicle and so forth to live with a a condition which previously you have. Um, and if you are not financially equipped to deal with that at that point in time, it may well be worthwhile mm. to get the cover. Paul, another issue is you, you, you have money in insurance policies, this kind of policy, and you see it go out every month, and you think, now hang on, wouldn't it be better to invest? Uh, and I will maybe not get the big payout if something happens to me, mm. but I'm actually putting a lot of money out that I'll never see again on, on the risk of getting something bad. If I invested, at least I would grow my income uh, from, from that Well, I think with hindsight, you'd obviously have that yeah. benefit. But uh, the problem with insurance is that you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, what you're really buying is peace of mind that should some life-changing event occur, yeah. you, you, you've got the cover. But I think in the, in the throes of things, um, what one needs to do is obviously balance out adequate cover. One doesn't want it to come back to your, your question earlier on. One needs to look at, uh, you know, covering the loss and not making a, a, a profit out of it, so mm. to speak. You don't want to be better off as a result of your heart attack. You want to make sure that at least your financial loss that you do or like, uh, are likely to incur is actually covered. Mm. So you will find adequate cover and make sure that you are comprehensively covered. But in the context of uh, hindsight, yes, uh, I, I agree with you. Insurance is probably the most expensive thing you and I will spend our money on. Mm. If nothing, something that does happen, well, it's probably the greatest thing that you've done. So yeah. you've got to find the balance in your financial plan for that, in, yeah. in the sense that you've got that safety net that does you know, deliver when you are in that particular situation. Yeah. Well, thanks to Yanni Fenter, who's Managing Executive at Absa Life, and Paul Rolfser, who is Financial Planner and Consumer Advocate at the Family Planning Institute. <laughs>
Okay, hi. How are you? I hope you're okay. Uh, well, basically, the ICMM report, or the ICMM, first of all, is the International Council of Mining and Metals. That's an independent body based in the UK. So the Chamber of Mines of Zambia just uh, contracted them to carry out an independent study of